Hello and welcome back to Niche Tea, where we talk about drama happening in communities you may not be a part of. Last time we talked about the insane fallout in the VTuber community between VTuber Selen Tatsuki, now known as Doki Bird, and her former management agency, Niji Sanji. Today we're going to recap a situation I am very late on um, in the book talk community, specifically related to the Sprayed Edges drama. The situation itself does seem to be fairly concluded, but I do think it's a really interesting conversation, so I still wanted to cover it. So what are Sprayed Edges? It's exactly what it sounds like when you realize they're talking about books when they say this. Painted or sprayed edges refers to an art technique where you take a book and literally paint on the edges of the book. Looking into this, I had no idea how beautiful some of these could be. Like, they are stunning. Now, I did distinguish painted or sprayed because when I say painted, I mean hand painted. Some artists will literally hand paint individual books for specific people. Sprayers, on the other hand, will do this in bulk with a bunch of the same book with the same design instead of customizing it for the customer, and that is relevant to the argument. What the business model ends up being for a lot of these sprayed edge small businesses is they will identify which books are very popular, ones that people who like artsy stuff are gonna be into, et cetera, like hot new releases from different authors. They will go and buy out in bulk a bunch of them. They will then bulk spray them with a specific design. They make content around that in order to advertise it. They mark up the price of the book because they bought it new, they've added this art to it, and then they sell those books with the sprayed edges through their shops, either online or in person. This seems to be something that is growing in popularity. They're certainly very beautiful in a lot of cases and a lot of readers really love them. So what happened? A small business that does sprayed edges named Whimsy and Wonder, which is on TikTok, posted a video basically going after a specific author. Now, this is the part where I apologize to you guys because in being so late for this, I cannot for the life of me find this original video. I promise you I looked everywhere too. I downloaded threads for this, still couldn't find it. So this summary is going off of the conversation that's happened since then, which include other people summarizing what was happening, but here's what I believe happened. An author whose books Whimsy and Wonder was doing bulk buying, spraying the edges, and then reselling at a markup for, emailed them directly to say, hey, I would appreciate if you would not sell my books or do this with my books, please. The accounts I've heard have said that the email from the author was very polite. It wasn't like rude or demanding or threatening legal action or anything. It was quite simply a request. I've also heard, though I can't find this post either, there might've been a post from Whimsy and Wonder beforehand that was like, hey, you know, reach out to us if you're an author and you wanna talk about this or something to those effects. So the author may not have even done this unprompted, though I don't think they're out of line to ask this in the first place, my opinion. This email then prompts Whimsy and Wonder to make a TikTok video blasting this author in particular for this request, I guess. I don't know exactly what she said, um, but I know that the gist of the conversation from this point forward was, do these people get to do what they want with the books once they buy the books? And that's the thing everyone's been swirling about pretty much ever since. Everyone pretty much agrees that Whimsy and Wonder did not handle this well in terms of that initial video and really shouldn't have brought this to the public. It's really not a good way to be managing your business, especially when your business relies so heavily on the immediate output from authors. Obviously, she doesn't have to work with them directly in order to just go buy their books, but still, since then, everything's been deleted, privated, whatever. Whimsy and Wonder deletes any negative comment on their page, and they seem to very much be trying to move on from this. So I think maybe they do understand this was not the best approach. But as I mentioned, this is a really big trend in the book community, and it has brought up a lot of really good conversation because there are a lot of authors who do have a problem with this. Now, when we talk about this, first up, Legally, they're in the clear. You may have heard the term first sale doctrine mentioned a lot around this, and that basically means once you buy a thing, you are allowed to do with it what you want and you are allowed to resell it. That's why there's no policing of garage sales or pawn shops or eBay. I've heard some arguments made about how you can't modify something materially and then resell it under the same name. So for example, if you buy Nike sneakers and resell them as is, you're allowed to do that. But if you change them a lot and then resell them as Nike, Nike can come after you for that. However, according to the lawyers I'm seeing who have jumped into this, which has been funny, that is more of a trademark issue. The problem is that you are selling something as Nike and you have changed what it is enough that it no longer represents what Nike is. In this case, it's not a trademark issue. It would be a copyright issue and you're not selling the book as though it's yours. You're selling their book 
with art on it. All to say that from everything I've seen, the sprayed edges, small businesses are all in the clear legally for what they're doing. But a lot of the points from authors aren't about the legality of it, they're about the ethics of it. Because these businesses in a lot of cases are marking these books up a lot. Like you're talking about like $70 for a hardcover book. None of which goes to the original author, despite it being based very, very heavily on their product with no agreement in place with the authors themselves. The pro sprayed edges POV on this, in addition to it being a legal practice, is that they are by buying these books. So the author is getting the sale for all the books that these guys go ahead and buy up front. They are then adding their value in artwork to the books and they are allowed to then price that as appropriate. And asking them to charge less or asking them to give the authors a cut of that is further devaluing their artwork that they are adding to the book, which is what the upcharge is for. And they're not stealing customers from the authors because again, they've already bought these books from the author, whether a customer buys it from the sprayed edges person who already bought it from the author or from the author directly, the author still got a sale. And they make the argument that if they had to give money back to each individual author for every book in addition to their overhead and everything that it would functionally kill their business. Arguments I've heard from the pro author side of this include that in order for these businesses to do this in the first place, the art that they have to make, even though it is their art, it necessarily has to be based on the writing from the author. Like it has to be relevant to that. Otherwise it wouldn't make sense to put on the side. These aren't random images, right? They are based on that IP. And so again, even though it's legal, you are utilizing their IP to make this money. Then the biggest arguments really center on the fact that authors make very, very little per book sale as it is. And when these guys come in, they're doing like bulk wholesale orders from the cheapest places they possibly can that minimize that actual profit to the author as much as possible. So for example, in the case of Whimsy and Wonder, I'm hearing people say that she gets her books from a place called Ingram Sparks, which is a place where an author could literally get cents per sale. And then she's turning them around and selling them for $70. She's making way more per book than the actual author. And I'm seeing a lot of conversation that this is specifically bad for small authors. Like nobody really cares if you're doing this with these like huge, huge, widely distributed books, they are making money. So doing this to indie authors or smaller scale authors, even if they have very popular books, hurts them a lot more than it would for like JK Rowling, whatever. So then especially if an indie author comes to you and says, hey, please don't do this to my books and you tell them to fuck off, it's not great. I'm really caught in this one. I've been thinking about it a lot. I understand arguments on both sides. Um, and I, the cop out answer that immediately comes to mind is I fucking hate capitalism. I think there is merit from the author's side to the argument that the sprayed edges folks should not be maximizing their profits in ways that minimize the profits of the actual authors. But it seems to have died down for now, though again, this is very popular. Again, the beautiful stuff. Truly, like go check them out. Like if you're somebody who collects books, I think it's something that could be very cool. Maybe just look into who you work with. And if you can prioritize ones that are able to work with authors directly, I think that would be beneficial to the entire system. But I'm very open to discussion and thoughts on this one. I still am noodling it in my head a bunch.